Hi, I'm Maria, a software developer working in Portugal, and today I'm going to answer YouTube questions. This is Maria Support. So the first question is, how did you handle when mostly at the start of your career you couldn't solve some things alone and had to ask for help? Was it too often? Did you feel bad about it? Yes, it was very much often. As soon as I started working, I saw lots of things in the code base that I didn't have knowledge of. I was aware of the technology, it was React, but there were some methods, some functions that I didn't understand, and I actually felt very overwhelmed. But I was lucky enough to have someone by my side, uh, a work friend, that he always helped me when I needed. My approach is... I try to solve a problem in two or three hours, and if I see that I'm taking longer than I expected to solve it, I then ask for help. I believe it's very important that you develop your autonomy first, especially as a junior software developer. If you have watched my videos about habits, you know that habits sometimes are formed with a trigger. So when you feel stuck, the first thing that came to my mind at the time was, okay, I'm going to ask that person for help. But I actually noticed that that this was a very bad habit because I actually needed to first try to solve the problem. And then I forced myself to first try to solve it myself, spend two or three hours trying to work on it. And then if I, if still I was stuck, then I would ask for help. And this is an approach that I still take up to this day in my work. So whenever I feel stuck, first I will try to solve it myself. And then I will look for my friends, my work friends, and actually ask, oh, you know how to solve this? Have you, have you ever bumped into this problem? I used to feel bad, I'm not going to lie, but now I have in mind that I don't have to know everything and even my friends don't have to know everything. And if I try to solve it and I, I can't manage to do it, I know that I did my part, I tried it, and then I will go and ask for help. So question number two. Regarding your job, how do you deal with stuff that you haven't tried out before, like payment systems or complex UI design? Usually what I try to do is go after that technology and see how other people implemented it. So I spend a lot of time scrolling in other people's repositories and seeing how they are implementing it. Some things that we also do in the place I work is sometimes when a new feature comes in, you know, in, in the dev industry, like recently Figma released uh, the dev mode. What we do is someone who understands a little bit more about the subject will make a walkthrough, you know, explaining what the new feature is or what the technology is. I think that is a very effective way of learning because not only the person that is explaining will know more about it because one of the best ways to learn is to actually teach it. But it's also good for us because instead of looking for courses online, which you can also do, like, okay, I, I also do it. But instead of doing that, not only doing that, but when there is actually a work friend or someone who also enjoys that subject teaching you, maybe your communication will be easier and there is actually a feedback on it. So if you bump into some work related technology that you don't feel comfortable working for, Try to look for a mentor, try to look for someone that actually understands a little bit better and set up a meeting, a Zoom call or something and ask them to make a walkthrough and explain, you know, the key parts of it. I think that's a very effective way. And after that, go build your project in that technology because it's by practicing that you can also reach, I don't, I'm not going to say perfection, but you can reach a certain level of quality. Question number three. I'm an Android developer and I'm currently taking a master's degree in data science. Very interesting field. So my idea is to change my area from software development to data, analytics, engineering science in a year or two. Any idea on the best way I could do this generally? In my opinion, the path that you're going to take when you change your career is very similar to as if you were just getting started in software development. I say it's pretty similar because there are basically new things that you will have to learn, but you already have a certain knowledge in your head that will also 100% be either necessary or will be helpful for you to enter in this new field. 
So since you're already pursuing your master's in data science, well, you're, you are already on the right track. I believe that theoretical knowledge in this field is very important. And then you can learn uh, the basic concepts like data analysis, machine learning, and etc. Because it depends a lot. Data engineering, data science, data analytics, they are related, but they're not the same thing. And as I said, it is a very similar path as if you were starting into software development. So what are you going to do? what you already did build practical skills and network with the community i think that's very important so by engaging with the data science community you know attending meetings conferences and meetups i believe that's also a very good way for you to already get to know some people that are already in the area that you want to go to and your experience as an android developer will also be very helpful helpful because some data related uh, areas require programming like python r and etc so your ability to develop software can actually be helpful and it will be helpful, sure. And then after building practical skills, learning theoretical knowledge as well, and engaging with the open source community, engaging with uh, people that are also in the field, you can actually start to applying for internships and actually go after seeking practical experiences. And then of course, you're going to have to change a little bit your resume showing, you know, your your project that you actually want to showcase because you're not an android developer anymore you don't want to work in this area anymore so you have to highlight the correct projects at first i would say that you're going to make less money because you're entering a new field and you're actually a junior but i'm not 100 percent sure of this opinion i still have to search and figure this out question number four Things you did in your first month as a junior front-end developer, what challenges have you faced in this first month and how did you overcome them? Well, when I got my job, I started working for an internal project, which was a user man management system. And the challenges that I faced, I already said in the, in the first question, uh, I looked at the code base and it was uh, very hard for me. Uh, as it was a remote job, so I didn't get to actually see my work friends, my work friend, because I only had one <laughs> at first, but actually looking at a code base that is customer driven, you know, even though it wasn't actually customer driven because it was a personal project. So actually facing a real world application, like kind of, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm shocked, but it was a cool experience. And I believe that even though I knew the technology, I had to search for a lot of things and actually study the code base. I think the most important thing is to actually get used to it. And don't worry, you will do it. You will see that code base in front of you for like months and it's actually hard for you not to understand it. Of course, unless it's like a super complicated thing, but in general, with repetition, you can actually reach some level of quality. Question number five. Why do you stay in Portugal as the salary is lower? While in an IT-based job, you could move abroad within Europe, Swiss, UK and make more money. Uh, that's true. The simple answer to this question is I don't want to. I don't deny the possibility of me in the future moving abroad, but I believe that the most, maybe the most important decision, financially speaking, would be to work in Portugal for a remote company. But not only that, I also have family here. But as I said, I don't deny the possibility of me doing that in the foreseeable future. Question number six. Do you ever go to meetups or events here in Porto? Yes. I go to conferences and meetups, not exactly in Porto, more, you know, here around the area I live in. But this year, I will be attending the Web Summit in November. It's not actually in Porto as well, it's in the Lisbon. But I always try to search for uh, technical conferences that are happening. I most of the times participate in online conferences. I recently mentored uh, a girl in a program called Geek Girls or something like that. I, I, don't, I don't remember. But it's a program that is focused in mentoring people, mentoring girls from that are willing to enter the software development field or actually changing careers and then they choose a mentor and we actually guide them you know into getting a job and how to deal with with uh, software development interviews and, and etc question number seven what do you like most front end or back end <sighs> good question i think i think i would go with front end 
I like developing front-end applications more, but but I think I am more fulfilled when I actually build back-end applications. I like dealing with data. I like dealing with the back-end logic, not that you don't deal with it in the front-end, but I, I think I feel more fulfilled, but I like front-end better. I don't know. You know, I don't know how to explain it. Anyways, my final answer will be front end. And now to the last question. Question number eight, how to effectively improve your skills and constantly get promotions? Well, I really enjoy the psychology field. And from the books that I have learned about how to learn new skills and you know, how to never forget them, I think the most effective way of learning a skill consists in three things. First, you're gonna have to repeat that a lot. You, you've probably already seen this image that I'm going to show you. It basically shows that if you are repeating things, you're basically telling your brain, okay, this information, this piece of information is important. You need to remember it. So only repeating is not enough because you can make the same thing wrong for years. And you know, you are repeating effectively, but you're doing it wrong. So I believe that when you seek for feedback, that's the second uh, important thing. When you actually ask, okay, uh, what do you think of my code? What do you think of this project? What do you think I could have done better? And when you seek for feedback, try not only to seek for it, but actually give. Most people, they're only interested in getting feedback, but it's also very good if you can give the other person some feedback as well. And the third thing is the main concept of all software development, which is constantly learning. But please don't burn out trying to learn everything all at once. I don't think that is very necessary. There are always new technologies coming up and you don't have to keep up with all the trends. Choose a technology and actually specialize in it. A more work-related answer, which I believe it's your... Um, your goal because you said improve your skills and constantly get promotions i believe when you take on uh challenging assignments especially as a junior software developer you are seen as someone who takes risks and someone who is willing to be independent and autonomous and people will actually see you as okay this person actually can deal with tasks that are harder and then also look for feedback like i said ask your work friends what they think of their of, of your work i used to believe that if you are good enough your work will speak for itself but you can't just stand there expecting people to notice it you know like only if you're very good oh my god what did he do this is amazing but if you're like average good like i am i'm very pre pretty average if you're a software developer you're watching this you probably know more than me and i'm here the one talking in a youtube video but when you showcase your skills when you develop your skills and you show people that you actually forcing them to look at you. And I know this is very hard, especially for my fellow software developers who are very shy, but try to sell yourself, try to sell your work like you mean it and talk about the work that you did and ask for feedback, you know, kind of forcing people to actually look at what you did. So this was Maria's support. <laughs> I hope you guys liked it and see you in the next one.